it's good. Um, I just uh, want to start off by saying that um, uh, on this title, actually, um, as we go on, really, it's not about heading towards good, it's actually heading towards beyond good. And I think we need to understand that very well. Uh, carefully contemplate the suffering of the of the five destinies and evil realms, so we understand that. If learning gives rise uh, to wisdom, and uh, the wisdom is beyond uh, worldly knowledge, and cautiously guard against the wrong, so we avoid from falling back. Then that comes from diligent uh, practice, and we create good and uh, blessed affinities in our practice. So. Uh, we are uh, the evil, I hate it was the good, and others pure dharma and affinities. So in Master's explanation here is, all of us in our daily living must be cautious and honestly contemplate. And, um, and you probably know that I emphasize a lot in the practice about contemplation because that's where you can grow in spiritual insights. We are not careful with the slightest deviation in thought is to suffer in the three evil realms because a thought can generate to an wholesome speech and wholesome action. So, and that have ripple effect uh, right throughout. So that's why we, we must always emphasize uh, in this practice, you've got to be very strict and um, be aware of our own thoughts. Only by listening, contemplating and practice can we uphold precepts, samadhi and wisdom. So I break out into three and those who have uh, listen to me in the very early days. I break it up into four parts. You see, when you listen, you learn to know, you learn to understand. So that part is very much uh, your mind. Okay, so your mind um, know the dharma, and you with your intelligence, you learn to understand the dharma, and the. One, what uh, necessary about this contemplation is this contemplation is not about the mind anymore. It's about realization. So this is the part about contemplation. It got to go beyond the mind. So this realization, it comes from, so okay, knowing and understanding come from your thoughts, your mind, right? So the mind is a bundle of thoughts. Realization is beyond uh, your mind, meaning it comes from non-thoughts. So if you then realize um, that realization of what the truth is, and you apply this carefully, uh, and make this sermon and apply it to your practice, and this is one of the practice. So no understand, realize, and then the practice. So wisdom is this discernment in here. And because when you apply that realization and in your practice, and that when you live the wisdom life and you grow in wisdom, and then you'll be able uh, to make the right choices in life and, and come to make um, the uh, uh, what is good, what is bad, and beyond. So we value what we say, every thought that stirs in our action, we must be cautious. And this is about the discernment when we apply it in practice. So we guard against um, doing wrong so that we do not commit uh, evils and then we are guarded by the precepts that we uphold. So in the practice, when we listen to Dharma, we must take in so that we give rise uh, to wisdom. And this wisdom is about the yeah, realization. So sometimes we go through experiential learning and, um, and so we do uh, as a process like a child then doesn't know what is, uh, how hot the fire is. So sometimes we get burned. So the important thing is that when we do, uh, when we fall, we learn from our mistakes. And uh, more importantly is that when you learn the Dharma and you apply it and you go through the experiential learning, then you go into what you call inner knowing and that's where you get your spiritual insights. Then no matter what we see, we will remain happy and at ease and naturally will be free because you understand uh, what it is. And more, more importantly is that we naturally, I think this, I should have bold this word naturally, be free of greed, anger, and ignorance. So it's not, it's, this is the part, is it, it, your mind can be aware and you force yourself, uh, oh, I don't want you, I mustn't do this, I mustn't do that. But it become insight, uh, come naturally. That means you, you already progress up to your higher level of consciousness. You progress that into your semi-conscious, you think, 
being inside your character, and that's what it is. So we must also also diligent practice when we create a good um, and blessed affinities. So when we do that, engage in activity, walks and minds and masses, and we engage, you know, naturally that will come true. So in, when we walk in our life in our life and we have a life becomings that will come to us. So we're going to make the right choices in life. And there is um, the wisdom going in wisdom life. So we do something that benefits everyone or something that benefits, but, but, but what about when it hurts other people? So whatever you say, whatever you do, um, ask yourself, whatever number one is, but you are you say, uh, is it true or not? Number two is that even if it's true, number two, if you ask yourself, is, does it hurt that somebody? Okay. And number three is that, is it beneficial to that someone? Okay, so these are the three questions we should ask ourselves. Is it true? Is it hurt somebody else? Is it beneficial? So this is the, for me personally, I'm just sharing this with you. Uh, this is um, the um, practice I undertake. Hurt never, however. Okay. So we must never stop doing good things. Uh, actually, there are four lines in here. I'm just sharing with you two here. So we must never stop doing good things. The most important thing is to avoid the evil and hate towards the good. So if you go among people and not be influenced, we have a pure state of mind. And so in this pure state of mind, that means you, you're, you, whatever you do is the purest of intention, okay? And uh, if we can avoid being influenced by living beings and be inclined towards goodness. So when we, walk amongst the masses, you, you, you meet the very different types of people. And it's very important that you have a pure state of mind that you don't get uh, influenced by other people's character, whether if they're rude to you or not, and become model for others. This is what called living the exemplary life uh, in our practice to inspire others. So we, know, we need to go beyond being good. Um, so a single thought can either be good or can be evil. And it's important that how a thought is just a spark and a spark can set the whole forest on fire. So a brief thought of goodness sprouts and we are aware that we must do good. So we practice with the four right efforts um, in the process of doing that. So we understand the Buddha Dharma. If we do good is without taking the Dharma to heart. Um, even if we practice the ten goodies for the entire lifetime, the best we can do is go up to the heaven. So therefore, doing good deeds is enough for you to bring you up to heaven. So you want to go outside the samsara realm, you got to go, um, that being good is not enough. So we need to go beyond that. So how is doing good is benefiting others, we must resolve to transcend this world. And then this world, this is in, in um, a samsara realm that we are in. So, so we do so with a pure mind and the whole practice about, the, about Buddha Dharma is developed a pure mind. And without any expectation, any repayment that we do, and that is the body's out of power. So we do so without um, any regrets or any worries, and without without any expectation uh, that we do so. And this is the uh, the traits of the four infinite minds. Then our goodness be long lasting, and we can truly behave in an awakened uh, manner. And that's what we want to do: is to awaken, to practice. Uh, to have the awakening mind. And awakening mind is otherwise known as the body jita. So the direction of light, now, as I mentioned about East and West, and basically it's a metaphor uh, in the sutra that and following good karma, we hate towards the east because there's the rising sun. And following evil karma, we hate towards because it's the setting sun. So heading towards darkness is, is what we should avoid. And um, a single awakening thought brings up a thousand realizations. And um, so a single awakening. So the awakening is referring to the mind. And um, so we also, and the sub subject of the mind is, it's really an, an entire um, discussion and um, an, an entire, entire talk. So we believe that for our, so we just say, uh, just take it here, the second awakening brings a thousand realizations. And that's how the, the Buddha, the Buddha is, have the, uh, all enlightened beings, have the awakening mind. 
Once you have been awakened, we head down the path of goodness, straight down to this path of goodness. And uh, the understanding of the Dharma doesn't mean that one is awakened yet. So as we continue the path of the light, we must never turn back to the road that leads to darkness. So in this mind, the fact is, and um, so we got to watch our mind very carefully, be aware that, um, um, or the state of our mind, because these, the mind simply can change uh, depending on the condition, uh, more so for us as a householder in practice. And anything that happens and the light becomes that come to us. And then when we react and we make the wrong choices or we react in an unwholesome way, then we degenerate in our practice. And this has been going on for billions of cow paths, and that's what we are today. So for ordinary people, is Master said it's like a little boat in the ocean and, the, and it's all in the full of holes, and we are sexually um, sinking, and, um, and we don't know where we're heading, and it just drifts in the ocean and being blown by the wind. Now, this wind here is what we call the whirly winds. And um, so therefore, we don't even know uh, where we're going. In, in the end, we ultimately sink in the bottom of the ocean, which is the ocean, meaning the samsaric uh, ocean or the samsaric sea. So, um, and a lot of people will, sometimes they do good, sometimes they go evil, and at one moment, uh, they are uh, in the east, one moment is they're in, in, the, in the west, shuttling the rising of false of goodness and rising of evil, because of ignorance, they do not know what they are doing. So therefore, for us, we got to do um, there are two things that obviously my master always mentioned is that we need to be um, engaged in internal cultivation and external cultivation. So in the external cultivation, the master has taught us uh, to keep the info, infinite minds in our, uh, which is the, and also be very mindful about that. And the internal cultivation, we need to be aware and we uphold the four points body sort of our view. So we must have faith, we must have uh, uh, honesty, we have sincerity and state fathers in our practice. And then we life after lifetime, um, we have to practice that way, then that will be we'll be able to, to progress. So the lessons learned is that we come and go through life and death. So, um, but in this human realm, we only live for a few decades. And this is not even a day in the heavenly realm. I'm not sure if you understand well the perspective of time in the different realms. Um, just imagine the perspective of time between you and a mosquito, okay? The mosquito lifetime and your lifetime. And to, to, to us, it's just one week and to the mosquito is one lifetime. So the perspective is the same thing. So when you're higher um, uh, realm. So therefore, um, we, we have to be, uh, understand that very well. And, um, and this time is very short. So we've got to see each other, uh, see each other at every moment to be in practice. So we must be very mindful in our practice um, so that we do not want to form uh, the, um, on the on, to be being trapped in this evil path just because of an wholesome thought. So we need to progress beyond just being good in our practice to have this pure mind. So it's rare to be born a human being and rare so to encounter the Buddha Dharma. So therefore, um, we must be very diligent in our practice. And uh, so we must practice the pure Dharma and give to others without expectation and become role models for others and live the exemplary, exemplary life of a spiritual experience, okay? So that can inspire others. Then we'd be able to transform others. Uh, we just were just dharma, and that's what uh, spiritual practitioners uh, should be doing. So um, in this contemplation today, um, I don't think I've shared with this before. I don't think so, but let, let's hear it. A farmer never complains about the land in which he plows, for he is skillful. So if you see a farmer plowing the land, uh, it's hard work, but he does it diligently uh, because he knows the land. He knows how to plow the land. And he knows how to fertilize the land. So in much, very much the same way for us, a, a skillful cultivator practices in the land of cultivation uncomplainingly. And um, life, is never, um, is, life is never smooth. 
and we encounter everything and challenges in our life. So therefore, it's no different from this skillful farmer who cultivates the land. So for us, we on our mind, be very concentrated and focused in our practice. Therefore, cultivate with faith, knowing that the blossom of fruition will be worth your efforts. The way has been revealed to us already, right? So the destiny is radiant, just like the rising sun at the horizon as light descends to the world of darkness. And that's what we are doing, walking towards the light and never turn back. So on relationship, the path is a spiritual compass in the journey. So when you have that with you, there is no alley dark enough that the spiritual compass cannot guide you. Right? So have the Dharma with you throughout. And um, so God and brothers and sisters, that's all I have today. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Chin, uh, for bringing uh, this uh, great radiating light uh, to our, you know, our learning process. It okay, can be quickly on our video. Uh, Brother Chin, uh, if you give us, you can take a nice beautiful